Hopefully you guys are all doing great. So, you know, we've got, um, I've got so many great comments in uh, the announcement today on um, our topic for the day. So, you know, I always like to start, I always, you know, I always take notes, even still, I've been going live now for, I was talking to one of my really good friends who her and I started uh, sort of online coaching around the same time. And so we were reminiscing of how it was when we first started um, in this business. And she was like fierce live speaker. Like she just loved going live and she didn't have a problem. And I struggled with it. And so the thing that helped me with my struggle with going live was to take notes of, you know, kind of prep out what I wanted to say. And still five years later, I still do that. Um, because no matter how long you've been in doing your thing, if something makes you nervous, it still makes you nervous, no matter how much you enjoy it or whatever. So going live still makes me nervous five years later. So I still take notes. So, but I sort of had a cadence of the way that I do this. And so if you're new to me, let me know in the comments that you're new, just put newbie. I would love to see you all who are new. Those who uh, have been coming and joining me weekly, you know kind of how we do this. I'm going to start this session with a couple of questions. So this topic is, you know, it's close to my heart because I was a newbie five years ago, at least on the online space. I've had a business, um, my own business since, gosh, it's been a long time. We opened up our first business in 2004. Is it four? No, 2006 right after our middle child was born. He was born in 2005 and we opened up a year later, we opened up a barbershop. And so I'm seeing a lot of newbie people on. And um, and so this topic about how to get your first clients is I know a topic that some of you are anxious to hear about because I remember when we opened up our barbershop and again, this was back in 2006, we actually sold it before we moved here. Um, and I remember thinking, my husband was like, I want to open up a barbershop. And I was thinking, how the hell are we going to get clients? <laughs> like, how are we going to get clients? And so my first question is to you all and type a one if this is you or zero, if you're cool and this isn't you, but like, are you worried about how you're going to get clients? Maybe you've started your travel business and you have started and you haven't gotten your first client. Or maybe you started a couple of months ago and you still haven't gotten your first client. You know, how many of you are worried about how you're going to get clients? Type a one if that's you. If you are not worried and you are good on the client space, then type a zero. If you are worried about how you're going to get clients, type a one. Right? So we've got a couple of ones that are showing up, a couple of people who are new, new. And so here's the deal, right? This is sort of everybody's concern when you start a new business. It was my concern when I started my business back in 2006. You know, fast forward three years later, the barbershop was doing well. And I decided to open up a salon because I always wanted to have my own salon. And I was worried again about how was I going to get clients? And, you know, that, and if you're not worried about it and you don't have your heart's content on clients. Maybe you, you should be worried about it, right? All right, number two question is, you know, what, what are, are you scared or worried about like marketing, right? You know, where is my notes? I, I, I wrote, you know, the, the second question I wanna ask is, you're worried about clients is your first, was the first question. The second question is like, what kind of client do you even wanna have, right? So this requires a little bit more description on your part. You know, for me, when we started our barbershop and I wanted, to, you know, we we were um, in a predominantly Caucasian um, neighborhood city um, at that time. And there wasn't any barbers, you know, uh, who could take care of African-American hair. Right. There weren't any black barbers. There weren't any barber shops in the entire city. There weren't any black barber shops in the city. So we knew that our client wanted to be, you know, the first question that we asked ourselves is, where are our clients? Where are they going to get their haircuts? And they were having to travel far because there wasn't anyone close or they were cutting them themselves. So we knew who our clients were. Do you know who, what kind of client you want? So you're worried about getting clients. My second question is, what kind of client do you want, right? Tell me in the comments, what kind of client do you want? Do you want moms? Do you want families? Do you want, you know, what, what does your client look like? What are they doing? Where are they? Are you even there where they are, right? So 
you know, for us in the barbershop, we wanted black guys, right? Or parents of black children to come and feel comfortable with getting their hair cut, right? If you know anything about the beauty industry, if you have a guy and if you're, you're black or even if you're Caucasian, right? Every guy wants to have a great haircut, right? And for the black community, barbershops are a big thing for men, right? You know, I, I had to learn this, right? My husband knew this, but I didn't know this. He is the barber and I didn't know this. So I like, I had to figure out like, were we in the right location to be found? Were we the right, were we the right barbershop? You know, could we pull our clients from Dallas to Frisco to get their haircut? You know, that was something I was concerned about, but I already knew who we were after, right? And so my question to you, and it's a pointed question, do you know who you're after? You're worried about getting clients, but do you even know who your client is, right? And what they need in you to fulfill, right? So some people are writing and they're saying that they are, you want clients that are serious about booking. Well, frankly, everybody that is interested in travel or ask you for a quote is interested in booking. The reality is they're interested in booking. Have you compelled them to book with you? Right. So you you attracted because many of the people you read the, the description and you understand that maybe you've had some booking, but you haven't gotten you've had some interest in quotes, but nobody has booked. How many of you have, has that happened to? Right. So that's my third question. How many of you on the line? You probably haven't had that many clients or you've had no clients, but you've had interest in you giving people quotes. Type of one, if that's you. Right. You've had people contact you for quotes, but they haven't booked. If that's you, let me know in the comments one. All right, and I'm gonna read the people who wrote the type of clients that they're looking for. All right, so somebody's looking for families and groups, right? Clients that desire luxury vacation and spaces, right? Clients that want luxury travel and not afraid to pay for it, couples and family. We have a lot of ones typing, so that means you've got a lot of people who have booked with you, but who have not I'm sorry, who have asked you for quotes, but you haven't actually gotten booked, right? But you guys are super sort of clear about who your clients are, right? You know that you want luxury clients, right? Who are willing to pay for it, right? Because that then leads to what? Higher commissions for you, right? So you want couples and families, but there are all sorts of couples and families, right? There are big, short, big, you know, small, fat, whatever types of couples and families, right? Um, what does that mean, right? And if a couple in a family saw you, would they know that you were the travel agent for them, right? Would they know that, right? If you can't clearly identify who it is that you're after, how will that person know that you are for them? All right, we're going to dive into that in this uh, episode or in this lesson tonight. We are going to talk all things about how you get your first paying client and how you do it in two months. But before we get dive into that, let me introduce myself for the newbies out there. My name is Sunday Gardner, the online travel boss. And I now come to you every Monday at this time, 6 p.m. Eastern, talking all things launching, operating, and having a profitable, not just a money-making travel business, but a profitable travel business. So I'm super excited that you guys are here. You've taken you know, a few minutes out of your holiday to join me so we could talk about this hot topic. And so, you know... I started to write my notes and then I, I sort of ran, uh, ran, I was running a little bit late, uh, was relaxing way too much. Like this has been probably the best no activity day that I've had in a very long time. So I did not do, I had a little bit of work to do in this morning. Um, but for the most part, I spent the entire day watching movies. Like I haven't done that in like a really, really long time. So I am totally rested and totally ready to come to you guys. So it sounds like you guys need some help getting clients. All right. But before we even go into it, because I've got five things that I want to share with you tonight. Um, before we go into that, we talked a little bit about some of the reasons why you may not already have clients, right? You've got a lot of ones, people who are asking you to do work for them, but you're not getting the value or the return of the work that you've done, which is the actual booking, right? So you do a quote and the expectation that you have is to have them book with you, but they're not doing that. And so why is that? Is because you're not setting yourself up for success. And so let's talk about how you do that. And so the first thing 
And if you have been with me for any length of time, you could probably already suspect what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. You need to be super clear who your client is, right? And so when I, when I, when, when you guys write to me that you want people who want luxury, right? Who are willing to pay for it. Everybody wants that, right? If you're in this business, which largely is a commission based business, you want people who are going to spend lots of money with you. But my question to you is why would they? Why would they spend money with you? Do you have the answer to that? And if you don't, that's one of the major things that you need to be clear about. So my first thing that I want to share with you to get clients in the next two months, I want you to spend time thinking about your ideal client, the type of clients, not just how much money they will spend, because if you've got the right client, money is not an issue. Let me say that again. If you've got the right type of client, you've thought about your client then money is not an issue. And let me give you an example. If I specialize in my favorite example, wedding destinations, right? Which is not what I specialize in. But if I did decide to specialize in wedding destinations, right? I'm not looking for everyone. I'm not looking for everyone to be my client. I'm looking for people who are engaged, right? And not only are they engaged, but they want to have a wedding in a untraditional way, right? That's super specific, right? So when, when you tell me that you're looking for couples and family, whoever, because I can't see the name of who I uh, typed uh, that, right? What kind of couple and what kind of family, right? Literally, there are millions, if not billions of couples and families, right? What type of couple and family and why are you uniquely satisfied or positioned to help these couples and families, right? I, you know, what would even be a better type of client is a professional couple, right? A professional couple. And even professional is still very vague, right? I want a couple who maybe is, you know, six figure, (laughs) six figure earner, right? They have six figure jobs. Maybe they're doctors, right? They're lawyers or whatever that, that description of that couple is. Be clear about that, right? So number one is really understand who it is that you want to go after, understand the client that you want, right? Not just how much money they want to spend or some generic uh, demographic about them, like couples or family, because literally everybody is a couple, right? They, They love somebody or they're with somebody. And yes, there's a lot of singles. So you have to distinguish between singles and couples, but still, that's still very vague, right? And people who want luxury, well, what kind of luxury, right? There are a lot of luxury lovers. What does that mean? in terms of the kind of client you want, right? Super specific is a wedding. I want, I want, I want, I want engaged individuals who want unique wedding wedding destination, uh, wedding experiences, right? That's specific. I can identify who that is. And then I can make myself clear to them that I'm the person that can help them in the language that I use, right? So number one is be super clear about who your client is and what you what what characteristics about them you can solve in your services and in what you sell number two is and i'm going to ask you what are you selling right and 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 you may maybe like well duh i want to know in the comments what are you selling like what's the number one thing that you want to sell in your travel business type in the comments let me know are you selling cruises to jamaica are you selling What are you selling? What is the thing that you are selling, right? Let me know in the comments. What is your one thing that you want to be known for and that you are selling in your travel business? An experience and not a vacation. What does that mean? What does an experience mean, right? All-inclusive trips, okay? All-inclusive trips are a little bit more specific. All right, all-inclusive where, where? To, to what country? I mean, literally, that doesn't tell me anything, right? So, and I, and I, and I, so if you're new to me, you may be like, well, damn, she's really rude. This is just who I am, right? And so I'm going to shoot it just as much as you shoot me an answer. I'm going to respond to the answer. But I want to know what you are specifically, okay? I've got somebody who's saying I'm selling Jamaica and Cancun. Exotic bucket list getaways. That's very specific, right? I am selling exotic bucket list getaways. Give me an example of an exotic bucket bucket list getaway that you want to sell, right? If you had to pick one vendor that you could work with exclusively, what would you be selling to them, right? 
Disney World also, right? Somebody else is saying that I'm selling Disney World also, right? Disney of itself, that's all you could sell. I was talking to our clients um, uh, last week and I was talking about in terms of specialization, if you pick Disney, that's all you need to say. You don't need to say anything else because Disney in and of itself is a specialty all by itself. This is just, just that's how much Disney has made it, right? So somebody wrote, I assume it's a person in terms of exotic bucket list getaways, Dubai, Morocco, and Bali. Those are your three destinations. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick these as an example. All right, these are your uh, and Larissa here. She is my destination uh, wedding specialist. Like she, she uh, is it? It's not Aruba. Like I know your like. Tell me, uh, Larissa, your your country. Like because Larissa, like you you become friends with Larissa because she does this well. Like I know that her specialty is wedding destinations. I know that she specializes in this country because that is everything that she exudes, right? Everything that she talks about, every St. Lucia, I knew it. I was like, she's a St. Lucia girl. I know last year or the year before you got your car wrapped in St. Lucia. She is the wedding destination specialist for St. Lucia. Like, like that's her thing. Like I know that's her thing because that's what I see on her personal page. That's what she talks about. She's always going to St. Lucia and talking about St. Lucia. She's always talking about wedding. Right. So what I want to express to you is <laughs> be like Larissa. Right. Um, and really what she's done well is she's identified what her market is and she identifies who her client is. And that's what I want you to do for your number one and number two. So for the person who said, I want to go to Dubai, Morocco and Bali. Right. And you are selling exotic bucket list getaways. Who is your client? Right. Who are the people that want to go on these exotic uh, trips to Dubai, Morocco and Bali? Right. Are, are, you, are these, um, when you sell sandals, gotcha. All right. So I just know you as the St. Lucia, <laughs> the, the St. Lucia person. Like I know, like if St. Lucia is the place that I want to go to, right? Larissa is the person that first immediately comes to my mind. Um, because that, because she, again, it's not like unclear to me. Like it's not surprising to me because I've seen her in action, right? And this is what you need to do as well. And so for the person, again, I'm speaking to Dubai, Morocco, and Bali. I got somebody who put Greece, Napa Valley, Turks, and Caicos Islands. All right, these are all great destinations. But again, I want you to visualize the type of person that's going to go on these trips, that is going to go to these destinations. Is it girl trips? Is it, is it couples? What is that person? What do they look like that are going to go on these trips? And are you clear about the types of trips that you're going to be curating? or creating for these clients, right? So that's what number two is all about. It's about the offer. What are you providing to people to opt into? Don't sit around waiting for people to give you, to ask you to give them quotes. What do you create for people to buy into? What will you be known for as the expert in? Does that make sense? Like, I want you guys to say that to yourself. What am I known for as the expert in, or what will I become known for as the expert in, right? That's the number two. So what I want you to really focus on is there are hundreds, if not thousands, I would dare say millions. I don't know exact numbers, but there are so many suppliers offering so many different experiences, right? You cannot possibly become the expert in all of those experiences. Right. Can you like you? I mean, that's not a question. I know the answer, but like I want you to ask that question. Can you possibly become the expert in all of the available destinations that there are in the world and the suppliers? You need to immerse yourself in one area that you can become the expert. That's really what number three is about is be an expert in that offer and in that client. Right. And so I want to say that one more time. Be the expert in that offer and in that client. So when I say you want to get your client, you're trying to throw straws at the wall and nothing is sticking. Some people, it does stick because they're just dynamic sellers and they really are passionate about their selling ability, right? Maybe they do an amazing presentation when they do the quote and people decide to buy with them. Maybe they're their friends and family. But if you want to consistently get clients, you need to become the expert in your offer and in your client. And so for the people who say that I want, I want clients that are going to, you know, that are luxury clients and want to pay, really, that's a, that's a centric around you, really, because you want to make the most amount of commission. And if you flip that 
that around and really be centric around your clients, then your clients will see that you care about them. So let me let me let me explain that a little bit further. I think it's in the water before I go. You want a luxury client because you want clients to spend the very most with you, right? Because you don't want them to waste your time. You want serious people who want to buy and you want to get large commission checks and you want to make money at this, right? But I would want you to flip that around. Why? What does a luxury client want? What 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 kind of luxury experience are you getting, right? Because my luxury may be different than the other person's luxury. Just talking to my girlfriend about shoes, right? I am like almost 50 and I I I, I cannot walk in heels and I have never really been able to walk in heels. And so I have to wear flats now because just it just is better for everybody, right? I'll fall less and da da da, right? But does that mean that I can't look luxurious in flats? Of course I can, right? But somebody who's wearing flats and the different look that they have, luxury is so ambiguous. What somebody's luxury is not somebody else's luxury. So what you mean by luxury, I have no idea what that means, right? What does that mean? What does luxury mean? What does experience mean? An amazing experience. What does that mean? Be specific because the person that is your ideal client, when you speak their language, they're going to know you're talking to them, right? Does that make sense? Like they're going to know that you're talking to them. But if you are being ambiguous in your own description of what you want, then how the hell can you attract it, right? So this is why number three is so critical. You've got to be an expert, not only in, and what does expertise mean? Expertise means that you know intimately what your client wants and what your offer, how it meets what they want. Does that make sense? Like if you're generically creating packages on the fly based on quotes and you don't even have something in your mind of what that looks like, when you're talking to your prospective clients, you're not even speaking their language, right? Let alone if you're marketing, you're not even speaking their language. So the super important thing is you must become an expert in that thing. Stop. What I really want you guys to do is stop being all over the place. Like stop trying to get, and don't get me wrong, I'm sliding in my inbox talking about how important all your certificates are, but stop trying to get certified in every single supplier that is known to man. Right. Stop collecting certificates that aren't giving you clients because you don't have enough knowledge even to speak the supplier's language, let alone your client's language. Right. So I know everybody's familiar with this book, the, the five love languages. Right. And so you don't know your client's love language <laughs> that like that's like the best thing. Like I just that just popped in my head. Right. You need to learn your client's love language. And how do you do that? First, you got to pick a client that's specific enough for your client to understand that you're talking to them and for you to understand who they are. So if you don't know who they are, then you got to do some research about who they are, right? So number three is super important. Somebody type expert, like become the expert in one and two, right? The offer and the client. And number four thing that you got to do to be able to get clients in, right? So this is, this is like, if you do these things well, Two months is not something like this is not something that you're going to like. It's going to take you a year to become an expert in the area. Pick an area, become an expert in that destination, become an expert for that client who attends that destination, who wants to be at that destination. Know them inside and out. Know that destination or that offer inside and out. Right. Number four is if you know who your client is. You know what your offer is and you're an expert in front of them, then your number four should be focused on getting in front of them. How do you do that? Well, the first thing that you do is you've got to create some reason for them to stop the scroll or stop and say hi or stop and allow you to introduce themselves. Right. So one of the questions that I didn't ask is who and how are you building relationships with your ideal client? Right. Are you guys doing that? Like type of one if you um, are not doing that or a zero if you are doing that. If you have a systematic way to build relationships with your ideal clients, put a zero. If you don't, put a one. Like I want to see how many ones and zeros that we get, right? I'm like, like, I don't know. I think I'm having like a super hot flash. Like I am like so hot right now. And normally I'm like freezing in my house um, and now it's hot. Like, so that's, that's the beauty of being in your late forties, almost fifties. Like I'm like, we're at like this hot, this lamp is on me. Like this light is on me. I'm like, oh, that's how it passed. 
That's all. All right. So we've got some ones, right? So this means that you don't have a relationship building mechanism. You're not building relationships, right? So again, I already know that you don't have clients. I know that you're not going to get clients, not at least on purpose, right? Because you don't have a way to start relationships. We are on social media and we're all, most of us are using social media incorrectly. Social media is about connection. It's about relationship building. It's about uh, connection. I can't say that in a different way. It's about connection, building connections and relationships and not being cheesy about it, right? But being super authentic about the relationships that you are building, right? You guys are getting to know me for the newbies. You're getting to know me through this forum that I've created. I've created a community of travel professionals who are all in the same space, right? And how did I get you here? I created an offer and you clicked on it and you joined it, right? So you either found me through a search or you clicked on my ad or you did something that, that I put out there that allowed you to find me. What are you doing to be found by your ideal client, right? Now, in two months, what do you want to do to be able to do that? You need to create a reason for people, not just any people, your ideal client to click and to find you, right? Whatever platform you decide, my choice platforms, <laughs> plural, right? I started with Facebook. I went to YouTube. We went to Pinterest, right? That's how people find me. How are people finding you? Or are you sitting by and waiting for people to find you? Are you waiting for people to pick up the phone and call your number? Or are you waiting for people to respond to you? Are you actively doing something that allows you to be discovered? right? Number one reason why businesses fail is not because the business idea is bad, it's because of ambiguity. Nobody knows that they're there. You want to specialize in wedding destinations. How are you getting in front of engaged couples, right? You want to specialize in, you know, a vague luxury travel. How are you getting in front of luxury clients? Are you just expecting them by osmosis to find you? Or are you actively doing something to get in front of those people, right? Whoever those people are to you, right? Those couples, those family members that you said that you wanted to get in front of, what is your active mechanism to get in front of that? So let me give you that. Because many of you are like, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. So you're just, you're telling me what I already know. So let me tell you how to do it. The best and easiest way to do that is to create a stranger offer, right? You know, you're like, what's a stranger offer? All of you all have opted into some sort of offer that you saw some piece of information, some thing that you saw and people clicked on it and they gave, and you gave them their e your email address, right? Some, something, you all participated in it, right? So that thing that they dangled in front of you, a piece of information, the five tips for this or the five things or, or join my live or join my group, right? That was the stranger offer that allowed them to start the relationship with you and the same thing is what you need. So. The number four thing is, is that you need to have a way to get in front of your clients consistently, not just anybody, right? So many of you, you, you are on your personal pages, right? You're on your business pages and, and, and maybe you're like, my business page is not just my personal page. I'm on my business page and I'm posting, right? But you're, and, and if you're doing it in Facebook, the reality is, and if you're not paying for it, the reality is you're always going to be ambiguous. You're always going to be. Um, obscure. <laughs> not, did I say I'm ambiguous? You're going to be obscure. No one's going to find you on Facebook if you're not paying for it because that is the way this platform is set up. Now, if you're on Instagram and you're actively using hashtag strategies to be able to be discovered on Instagram, perfect. If you're on Pinterest and you get the Pinterest game down, right? The point is whatever platform you decide to be on, you need to be using the strategy associated with that platform to see success. And the best way to do that is to create a stranger offer, right? So I talked about what's your like main offer, right? What's the main offer that's going to satisfy that client? But what's the one thing that you can create that's going to allow them to even notice you, right? How many of you all have an opt-in offer? How many of you all in the comments, if you do have an opt-in offer, offer type a zero. If you do not type a one, I want to see how many ones we have in the, in the crowd, right? How many of you have a piece, an offer of some sort? It could be a guide. It could be a document. It could be a, a video. It could be whatever you decided to be. How many have a opt-in offer that will allow somebody to give information? You guys can, you know, get, you can get information about the client, the email address, phone number, a like on your business page, a, you know, a join in your group. Do you have some way 
to connect to people that are your ideal clients besides just going out there and actually physically meeting people because most of you have full-time jobs, right? So how do you have the time to meet people? And it's COVID, right? It's also COVID. So even, you know, the networking events that people had in existence, they didn't have a way to, I mean, it's even harder now to meet people physically, right? Like it, um, like it used to be, right? So we've got one zero. So Linda means that you've got a stranger offer. We've got a couple of ones that are typed in. So the point is, is that your number four is you've got to have a consistent vehicle to get in front of your ideal client. And not only that, you've got to get their attention. So you need an offer that's going to get their attention. So that's really about number four is about getting in front of that person consistently, people consistently and giving them a reason to want to meet you. Right. Awesome. All right. So somebody says, yes, they have a full time. This is their full time job, work from an office, not a home. And, you know, here's the reality is that you can do this even if this is not your full time job. You can you can create an offer. You can you can run ads. You can do organic strategies that are going to get you in front of your ideal client. Right. The point is, is that you are in the front of your ideal client. And many of you all are not. Many of you all are only utilizing your personal page or your business page. You don't know that Facebook is a pay to play for platform, the triple P's, right? And you're not, you're not in front of the people that you want to be, right? I want you all to think of your first paying clients may very well be your friends and family, but the reality is you've got to give them a, a compelling reason besides the hookup to want to utilize you, right? So demonstrate to them that you are you, you've not, you didn't just pick this, you didn't just sign up with an MLM, decide that this is what you wanted to do. And you have to have really threw out some posts that says, yes, you're a travel agent now. Let them show them that you're serious about this business, right? Demonstrate to them that you're serious about it, right? You don't just want their money. You want to actually genuinely help them, right? So what are you doing to show up that way? What are you doing to let them know? Like I mentioned to you, Larissa, she is my, you know, my poster child and I'm not, she's not even a client of mine, right? But my point is, is I know Larissa. I mean, she has been a client, like she's bought a couple of our trainings in the past before. But my point is, is I know what Larissa does, right? Because I see her and I know what her specialty is, right? I don't know what your specialty is. And, and, and unfortunately, you don't either. Right, you're all over the place. You're you're ambiguous about who it is you help. You're ambiguous about your offer. You're ambiguous about your 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 expertise. You are obscure because nobody knows you except for your friends and family, and they're not taking you seriously because I can tell why they're asking for you to quote, but they're not booking with you, right? Because you've not positioned yourself as somebody worthy of doing that. And let me let me let me just clean that up just a little bit. I don't mean that you're not worthy. I'm saying you haven't positioned yourself, commanding yourself, push it, positioning yourself in a way that commands not only their booking, but the fees associated with doing the quoting, right? Many of you're not even charging fees. That's a whole nother topic that we'll get to later. But my point is you want this business, you want to make money at it, take it seriously. You And, and it's not that you're not taking it seriously. You're doing what every other person who just signed up for the business doing, right? You're letting people know that you joined, right? You launched, but you've got no expertise. You have no clearly defined client. You have no clearly defined offer. You have no way of getting in front of your ideal client, right? So the first thing is, is if you get number two, number one and two, you know who your client is, you know where they are, then you should be in front of them with number four, right? With a way for them to get their attention. And number five is seek out help. If you don't know how to do any of these things, seek out help, right? Seek out help and stop seeking out help for free, right? Because the help that's really going to get you what you want is going to require some sort of investment. I'm not saying you've got to invest it with me, but I encourage you to seek out help so that you can get the systems. Number one, uh, let me let me finish this thought. Seek out help so that you can get the systems in place that you need so that you can get all of the one through five, four done that I've said. So if you don't know how to do all these things, seek out help. Number one is understand who your client is. Define who your client is. Number two is be clear about what your offer is, right? You want to get a client. You want to get your first client. What are you offering them? What is it that you're selling, right? Don't be ambiguous about that. Be super clear about what that is. Number three, is be an expert in number one and number two. 
All right, you want to be, you want to get your first paying client, right? And if I was going after wedding destinations, first of all, I would not just say that I was going after wedding destinations. I would have already understood what it means to be a, a destination planner for couples because they have a unique need, right? They have a very unique need, right? If I wanted to be a, a specialist in Disney, I would immerse myself in Disney or have already had done that. And I would know all that the supplier Disney has to offer and I would become an expert in that thing, right? You want luxury, but are you an expert in luxury travel? Who are your luxury vendors? Who are your luxury suppliers? What kind of clients do they go after? And are you in front of those people, right? So number three is about being an expert in that thing that you want to your client and in your, uh, your offer. Number four is about, what did I say number four was? Uh, number four is about having an offer and being consistently in front of that client, right? And so that really is around, I talked about having a stranger offer. I talked about your platforms, making sure that the right platform that you're following the strategy for that platform. All of you all are on Facebook because you're here, right? And all of you are using Facebook um, probably as your marketing tool, but you're not paying for it. You're trying to do it for free. And granted, you can do it for free, right? But it's gonna take you a lot of effort and a lot of time to do it for free. If you really want to be seen in front of your ideal client, you're going to have to pay for it because that's just the way this platform is structured. That's how Zuckerberg has it. That's the way he has it. I teach people how to leverage that. But the reality is if you want to do use Facebook, get in front of your ideal client, right? Using Facebook, you're going to have to pay for it in boosts and in Facebook ads. That is the only way that this platform works. You cannot organically uh, do this without, if you're not paying for it, you're going to have to do it in time and effort and lots of it to do it. All right, and number five is to get help. Get help, reach out to get help, either through me, my team, or another coach. My point is, if you don't know how to do, how to create an offer, how to identify your client, make sure that you intimately know your client, how to create and craft an offer, right? Those are things that you're going to have to learn, right? Can you do it in two months? You absolutely can do it in two months, right? Can you get your first paying client in two months? You absolutely can, but you can't, let me just say this. It's not just getting your first client. It's being able to rinse and repeat and do it over and over, right? So you may be able to get your first client by just doing some of the things that I do and you throw things out on the wall and hopefully something will stick and somebody will take that quote that you give them and actually be interested in it, right? But first of all, set yourself up to be the person that, like that was sort of loud, uh, set yourself to be the person that is the go-to person for that area. Like if, so. Let me not bust the bubble of all the people that were pretty generic, but let's just say you want to specialize in luxury travel. What define what luxury means to that? Be exuding that. Like, let me just say this. Like I watched a YouTube video just today and it was luxury decor. Right. And it was like about like how to decorate, like follow me and watch me do luxury, luxury decor. And she came on the video who am I to judge? But I'm going to tell you, she came on the video. She had a t-shirt on and she had on, she just looked like regular and she was sitting down. Her hair wasn't done. And don't get me wrong. I'm probably sounding like I'm judging, but the reality is, is my immediate thought when I saw her was she doesn't know anything about luxury. The house doesn't even look presented like, like the room that she was sitting in that was that she was doing the recording didn't even match what the title was, right? So this is what I'm saying. If you're gonna be a thing or specialize in the thing and you wanna be the expert in the thing, make sure you match that thing. You represent that thing. Your Facebook group is, is your Facebook group, your business page, all the things that you are exuding represent that. There's another lady I follow, right? And she's all about clothing and what she shows you what to dress. And that girl looks on point every single time. And every link that she does, I click on, right? Because she matches what it is that she's saying. And the name of her thing is High Low Lux or something like that. And everything that she puts on looks like the way her site is, right? It looks like her YouTube channel name, right? And so I'm saying, I don't know any of you all from Adam. I don't know if you look like luxury. I don't know if you go to luxurious uh, destinations and you are exuding all of that. But what I'm saying is whatever you want to specialize, be the thing that you want to specialize in. Represent that thing that you want to specialize in, right? If you specialize in wedding destinations and you never show us a wedding that destination uh, location, how will I know even know that, right? That's the best way to show somebody 
is to do the thing that it is that you want to specialize in. Hopefully that makes sense. Sounds a little convoluted when I'm coming out, but let me know in the comments if that makes sense. My point is you want to be that thing. You want to be that expert. Immerse yourself in that area of expertise that you become, right? I am all things online travel boss, right? You don't come to my space and not know that I'm not the coach for travel bosses. Like you just don't know that. You may not know it when you meet me, but once you come into my arena, that is what I talk about. That is what I know. That's how I show up, right? How are you showing up in the area of expertise that you want, right? Be like Larissa. Larissa is my is my is my guinea pig today because I know that she specializes in wedding destination. When she goes on trips, she talks about it. When she I know that St. Lucia is her place because when she goes somewhere, at least the last several trips that I've seen her on has been St. Lucia. I know that that's her specialty. What is what is what you're saying and doing? in on your page in your life represent your business how does it represent your business and if it doesn't then you really need to develop a strategy and that's what today is really all about listen i've got a few minutes for some comments some questions if you have any questions uh let me know in comments um and if not i'm going to skedaddle out here i'm going to enjoy the rest of my labor day so if you have any questions about the five things that we talked about let me know but what i will tell you this if you are randomly just taking in quotes from everybody because you're trying to get your feet wet that's great but you should expect that people particularly your the people that know you they're really just trying to price shop right unless you set yourself up as you know not only am i new to the travel business but this is what i specialize in this is where i can help you and this is where my focus on i bet you you will see a turnaround just in the types of bookings uh, request for quotes just if you start to specialize in that and you start showing up as the expert in that thing all right so for those that are new to me welcome 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 be here every monday this is our new day and time super excited to be showing up in this new time so i've got some of my clients on and some of uh, some people who are not clients if you are in the travel passions to profit reloaded program all of these five things we will be going over in the program so do not worry we will be going over exactly how you do all of this inside of the program so um carolyn thank you so much all of you who join me live have a phenomenal rest of your labor day and i will be seeing you all next monday have a great evening bye